Hello and welcome to Out and About. I'm Diane Gonzalez. If one of your New Year's resolutions is to make some improvements to your home, your yard, or your garden, you'll want to mark February 9th through the 12th on your calendar. It's the Nebraska Builders Home and Garden Show at the Lancaster Event Center. There's a good reason it's been a Lincoln tradition for more than 40 years. And joining me to talk about this, this year's show is Mike Binker. He's the executive vice president of the organization behind the show, the Home Builders Association of Lincoln. Mike, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Now you've, you're fairly new to your <coughs> excuse me, fairly new to your position. You've been in your in your job less than a year, mm -hmm. but you're uh, you're quite familiar with the show because you've been an exhibitor. That's correct. Yeah, I started uh, my current position in May. But uh, prior to that, I've been a builder remodeler here in Lincoln, and I've been an exhibitor at the show. And so now I'm getting the perspective of being on both sides of the aisle. All right. And uh, you were also a past president in 2009? That's correct. And that's where I get into some of the history of the association. And, and uh, it's a privilege to be able to be in this role now and continue to help a lot of my colleagues and work for the association. Now I imagine the show has grown quite a bit over the past 40 decades, about, or four decades, about how many people attend the show? Um, I expect that there will be somewhere 15 to 18,000 people through the show uh, over the course of four days. And uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful opportunity, not only for the exhibitors, but for the public, because most of us are fortunate enough to either own or live or rent in a home, uh, enjoy our yards, uh, need furniture or TVs, and you'll find all of uh, these opportunities available at the show to see what's new or ask questions as to why something is working or not working. Now I imagine the um, move to the event center um, from your previous location really allowed you to expand the show as well. It, it has. It, there's a lot more room and uh, more opportunity for us. The show continues to grow from one year to the next and uh, hopefully will continue to do so and everybody looks forward to it. Now tell, uh, tell someone who hasn't ever been to a show like this before what they, what they can expect to see. Well, when you come to the show, um, there'll be a lot of fun, there'll be entertainment, there'll be opportunities to meet one-on-one -on -one with builders or their, their representatives, uh, remodelers, landscapers, um, vendors that supply products, uh, opportunities to ask questions about heating and air, furniture, uh, TVs. Um, there's seminars, educational opportunities where you can learn about, uh, you can ask the expert, uh, bring questions that you have. Uh, we'll have backyard farmer on site live, um, other landscaping opportunities, uh, energy efficiency uh, programs to assist you in uh, making improvements to your home. Opportunities to learn about that too. Now, do the vendors do they actually set up like a kitchen or a, a patio? We're always waiting to see what we're surprised with, but uh, they have from year to year. They'll set up a mock room. Uh, there'll be pictures, videos. Um, however they feel that they can best uh, display and give you an opportunity to see what they have to offer either in product or services. Okay, we should mention we're taping this in early January. At this point there are still some exhibitor booths that are available if people are interested. Yeah. About how many exhibitors do you think that you will have overall? I expect to see more than uh, probably 275 to 280 different exhibitors and they'll have booth sizes uh, from uh, 10 foot or 100 square feet up to thousands of square feet and so there's all sizes of booths uh, we do have our kids square again this year so there's an opportunity uh, for clowns and tattoos and uh, meeting some of the mascots from the salt dogs or uh, trooper ted uh, there's some safety opportunities and uh, so it's an event for the whole family wow this must take an awful lot of uh awful lot of time to put together, time and energy. It does take a lot of time and the planning process starts early and um, it, you know it continues to evolve and develop from one year to the next. Um, trends come in and out and new opportunities come around and so that way each year the show people are in different spaces, some are in the exact same spaces, uh, but there's always new people people new opportunities from year to year. Well give us a prediction, what do you think some of the new trends will be at this year's show? Um, 
I don't know as far as trends, I'm always excited to see myself because uh, a lot of the manufacturers have new products and new trends coming online. And so some of the exhibitors feature those at our show. And so, you know, if you're looking for a new product and some of the exhibitors have uh, show specials and sales. So there's an opportunity to come out and maybe get a discount that you wouldn't get uh, if you just stopped in at their place of business. Um, but I think the trends just continue to evolve and the nice thing is is whether you live in a, a home, a large home, a small home, a town home, an apartment, uh, rent or own, you know, everybody has different needs and so you can find a little bit of everything and that's kind of the beauty of the show and what's nice about Lincoln is you can pick what's best for you and your family. All right. How do you measure the success of a show? Is it whether the vendors are happy, whether the the folks who come are happy? Uh, hopefully everybody's happy, but uh, we do get feedback from our uh, exhibitors and we take that into consideration in planning for the next year's show. And uh, you know, they have expectations of what makes a good show for them. And uh, we get feedback from the public too, uh, as far as accessibility and you know, things like weather are kind of out of our control, but uh, we try to accommodate and make things convenient. Uh, you know, a lot of the entertainment and clowns and considering the whole family is so that it's an enjoyable experience for the whole family. All right. Um, now, we all know that the rec recent recession has had an impact on everyone. Many people are staying in their homes and that's really affected the remodeling industry. More people are staying put and remodeling instead of moving. The remodeling industry uh, through the last few years has stayed pretty strong. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily grown, but it just hasn't dipped off as much as what the new homes have. Um, once again, there's opportunities. Uh, some of that has to do with uh, aging in place and people being able to stay in their homes longer. We've got uh, products and knowledge and expertise on how to remodel homes and allow people to stay in their homes longer, uh, remain accessible through bathrooms and entryways and uh, ramps and uh, grab bars and other safety features. And um, so, yeah, it's kind of location, location, location. And um, if you have a great location or a family history and want to stay there, it's amazing what you can do with the interior or exterior of the home to make it your dream home. So I imagine one of the trends that we'll continue to see at the home show every year is, is uh, products for, those, uh, for the aging population. Um, I don't really have control over what's at the show, but I know we have uh, businesses locally that uh, sell those products and they want to get the word out, make sure people are aware of where they can find them. So I would guess they'll be at the show. Now home building is such a critical component of any local economy. Are we starting to see a turnaround here? We have been seeing some good signs and uh, even uh, permit numbers are starting to improve. Um, the builder confidence, the confidence of the public seems to be improving. Uh, people are looking more planning, going ahead and making the move. Interest rates are still at an all-time low. Um, uh, prices and things, the competition's strong, and so it's, it's a great time to buy a home, build a home, remodel a home, and uh, have the home of your dreams. And this would be a great place to get some ideas. The Nebraska Home and Builders Home and Garden Show, again, it's Feb February 9th through the 12th. The hours kind of vary each day. That is at the Lancaster Event Center. Um, if you'd like more information, you can call 402-420-9800, and the website is www.hbal.org. It's $6 admission for adults, $5 with a can of food. Kids 12 and under are free. And I understand you're going to build a house of food or fill a house of food. The Remodelers Council every year uh, puts up a home that uh, is designed to, to house and and display food that's donated at the door and uh, we hope to uh, collect five to six thousand pounds worth of food for the Lincoln Food Bank and they really appreciate the, the contribution each year. All right sounds like a great show Mike thank you very much and we'll keep our fingers crossed for good weather. Thank you. All right when we come back Jeff Mall from the Convention and Visitors Bureau will join us. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Out and About, and Jeff Mall joins us now from the Lincoln Convention and Visitors Bureau. It's a busy time at the Event Center. We just talked about the Home Builders Show, and there's a couple other big shows coming up, starting with the Toy and Buckle Show. Yes, one of my favorites because I can go back and see a lot of the old Hot Wheels, Tonka toys that I had, the Matchbox toys, and even maybe that pink Barbie Corvette that I'd my say sister I'd, had. I would be there at the Barbie Dream Houses probably. Yeah. That's right, and this is the 26th year for the Husker Toy and Buckle Show, and that again will be at the Lancaster Event Center. Buying, selling, trading, tractors, trucks, cars, bulldozers, and trains, and much, much more. 180 tables. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of collectibles, so uh, definitely show up and just kind of take a look back, a little nostalgia while you're going out. All right, and then coming up on January 28th and 29th at the Event Center, we've got health, happiness, and handbags. That sounds uh, like something for women. That's a good day. It health, is a good day. And handbags. This is the fourth anniversary of the Women's Expo and education and business opportunities, health, wellness, fashion, and beauty. The first 500 ladies each day will receive free gifts. So wow. get there early. All right, and you can have a free souvenir photo taken with your girlfriend. So it's a good day out with the girls. Should be a lot of fun. All right, and then the big uh, boat, sports, and travel show also coming up in early February. Yeah, the commercials you, you can't miss, remember the... Well, the skiing squirrel and yeah, That's the, right. Twiggy the Water Skiing Squirrel, this is uh, actually the Boat Sport and Travel Show has been 40 years running in Lincoln, Nebraska. This year featuring Ziggy the Water Skiing Squirrel, <laughs> Fishing for Trout, and Paul Messerschmidt, the Goose Man. I think the Goose Man has been there before. He has, as well as Ziggy, so uh, we're looking forward to that. Petting Zoo for the kids, and don't forget on Veterans Day, veterans get in free. And Scouts, whether you're a Girl Scout or a Boy Scout or a Scout of some sort, you get in free throughout the event. And we should mention that, you know, as the weather is cold in early February, it's a nice time to go out and, and, and pretend that you're in nicer weather. That's right. And it may maybe snow by then. I mean, we don't know. No. We no. don't know. It's been a good winter. It's been a good winter. Um, some good theater coming up. Uh, Twelve Angry Men at the Lincoln Community Playhouse. And... Uh, You've seen this on televisions, <laughs> probably, and uh, it's really fun to see that on the stage. Yeah, the story of 12 men must the deciding their fate of a young man on trial for murder. Tempers get short, gets kind of crazy from there. A lot of electrifying clashes throughout. So a good story, again, something you've probably seen out there at the theater at some point. Our good friend Scott Glenn is one of the 12 angry men, so oh got to go out and Should see Scott. Good. Did you know that was originally written for TV? I did not. 1954. Not too long ago. No. <laughs> Maybe not for you. All right. There's also some good theater at uh, Wesley, and they're doing Spring Awakening, which was just, I believe, at the Lead Center last year. Yes. And again, we'll see this at the McDonald Theater, Nebraska Wesleyan University. Thanks to everybody at Nebraska Wesleyan for all of the great theater that they put together. This is a, a folk infused rock musical and a modern adaptation of the 1891 German play. And this show took home eight Tony Awards in 2007, so a little bit of history with this one as well. Well, you should mention it was banned in Germany for its explicit content. Yeah, so, so should we kind of warn audiences? Yeah, that probably. They'll, they'll clean it up at Nebraska. Yeah, Wesleyan. I'm sure they will. All right. Also at Wesleyan, they've got some music coming up. Uh, it looks like a couple weekends in February. That's right. Uh, we have the Cabaret Series at Nebraska Wesleyan Studio Theater. And uh, this is their theater department is proud to present a new Cabaret Series under the direction of Dr. Dan Hayes. It'll be approximately two hours long, and we'll showcase a wide variety of musical theater and non-musical theater literature. All right. The Lincoln Com Symphony Orchestra is teaming up with the writing of children's author Lemony Snicket. Now, she's famous for a series of inf unfortunate events, and she put together, he or she, I don't know if it's a he or she, <laughs> put together this piece called The Composer is Dead. Yes, narration by Tim Marone. This good intro, this is a great intro for y youth out there that are looking to get into the theater. The Lincoln Symphony Orchestra and the children's author Lemony Snicket take audience on a musical mystery, as we mentioned earlier. Introduces young audiences to the instruments in the orchestra. It sounds really, it sounds, sounds pretty, pretty exciting. cool. And you yeah. know, the Symphony Orchestra has done a great job broadening their audience, not only with the affordability of their tickets, but getting it into the youth and some of our public school and parochial school uh, audiences out there. Should be fun. Should be fun. I'm losing my voice, so you have to talk about trumpet pyrotechnics while I take a drink here. Yeah, a few too many pyrotechnics <laughs> in your day, huh? Uh, the concert will feature Chicago trumpeter Kirk Garrison bringing his acclaimed powerful trumpet sound to perform as a guest artist with the Nebraska Jazz Orchestra. And an interesting story, during his nine years in the United States Air Force Band, 
Kirk Garrison developed a unique ability as a lead trumpet player. He has played across this country, and uh, of course we thank him for his service, but also we're excited to see him at the Cornhusker Marriott. Absolutely, and we should men <coughs> mention too, if I can, um, that the 2012 Young All -Star Lions All-Star Band will be featured that's, as that's well. That's fun. All right. Coming up at the Rococo is a band whose name we can't pronounce. <laughs> Chris Washburn and S-Y-O-T-O-S. What's I, the acronym on that? I, well, I googled it last night and it could be an acronym for See You on the Other Side. Ah. What I was really trying to look for was how to pronounce it and I can't. So it's Chris Washburn and S-Y-O-T-O-S. That's right. They push the boundaries of Latin jazz weaving contemporary up-tempo beats with a driving sound. This is a Latin jazz institution. They've been labeled by a lot of great uh, newspapers and radio people across the country. So get out of your chair a little bit. Come on down to the Rococo Theater. Sounds good. We do want to mention three fundraisers that are coming up. The first one is for teammates, January 26th at the Great Hall at Lincoln Station. Clayton Anderson will be there. You can never hear Clayton Anderson's story enough. It what, is a, what an inspiration. And thank you, Clayton Anderson, for everything you've brought to our country and as well as our state. This is an awards and silent auction supporting over 800 teammate matches across Lincoln and Lancaster County. Great event and a great cause. Another great cause, United Way Helping Hands Auction. This is sponsored by the Women in Philanthropy Group, the fifth annual, and they fe it features gloves, scarves, bracelets, rings, and necklaces, another great women's event. And the proceeds go to a really good cause. That's right. They uh, provide diapers and clothing for families that cannot afford them. So uh, tis the season, you know, reach a little bit into your pocket and, and come on out to this event at the Embassy Suites. Now the Friends of the Lead are also doing their Crystal Gala, the Black and White Ball, January 28th at the Lead. Dinner, dancing, entertainment, all to support the Lead. Great cause. A good date night as well. Please come out and support the Lead Center. Thank you so much for their staff over there for giving us a great calendar of events each year. And we're going to run through four of those great events right now, starting with Young Young Frankenstein. <laughs> the Mel Brooks movie is alive. Is that right <laughs> on this one? This is great. Uh, they attempt to create a monster with hilarious implications and complications. It's a, if you've seen it, it's amazing. Come see it at the Lead Center. It should be a lot of fun. Adult themes and language, That's of right. course. All right. Um, and then the voices that uh, from The Lion King and from Graceland, uh, Lady, Lady Smith Black Mombazo. Yes, um, I love The Lion King. I've watched it a million times, it seems, on, on video at home and uh, had a chance to see it down at Disney. But uh, this is an all-male cappella group from South Africa that blend their South African music with traditional gospel. And they are, again, the voices from the animated film, The Lion King. All right, Mamma Mia comes back for four performances in early February. And then the Brooklyn Rund Funk, <laughs> another one I can't <laughs> pronounce, Rund Funk Orchestrata. Very nice. The Hills Are Alive, they're calling this production, and uh, rock out to one of the lead's favorite things in the 11 and 12 season. They've said a lot about this already. The Rudd Funk Orchestrator, or Orchestrator is a rock band and orchestra mixed together. They An do, interesting mix. They do a twist on the beloved score of The Sound of Music. Yes. It's called The Hills Are Alive. That should be a lot of they fun. They will be alive, I have a <laughs> feeling. We want to mention a couple of uh, art galleries in town that we are especially proud of. Kudos, of course, to Ann Burkholder. She's featured on this yes, month's Lead yes. Magazine. 25 years she has had the Burkholder Project in the Haymarket. She was really a pioneer in that area. She was in the Haymarket before the Haymarket was cool. Mm -hmm. She was one of the visionaries who saw the possibilities there. They're having their 25th anniversary show at the Burkholder, 719P, where they, where they started out, um, and also helped establish the first Friday Art Walks. She is really a... Uh, a treasure to have in this community and an excellent artist as well. So make sure you get to the Burke Holder to check out their 25th anniversary show. The Lux Center for the Arts also has a lot going on. They're doing a show called Changes, uh, UNL Ceramics 1987 through 2011. This is new work by UNL Ceramics faculty members past and present who helped shape the nationally known clay program, folks like Gail Kendall. Yes. Um, they're also doing rock, paper, and scissors, which is clay, paper, and metals works. Uh, luxurious. This is local jewelry artists showcasing their work in a one-night show, January 19th. They also have a lot of classes starting at the Lux Center, so you'll want to check out luxcenter.org and uh, get your uh, artistic talents going. It will be fun. That's a lot of time between 87 and 2011. That's I can only right. imagine what kind of changes happen. Yeah, it should be, it should be a, a beautiful show. All right, let's talk sports. We can talk a lot of sports. There's a lot going on. UNL's track and field, Frank Savine, Husker Invitational. Again, this is the 37th annual 
Husker Invite uh, brought to you by Frank Savine. This goes back a long ways. Come out and enjoy some great, exciting track and field. And that people don't realize the Bob Devaney Sports Center features the finest, if not the best, indoor track facility in the country. Uh, what they've done with an elevated track, and there's great viewer standpoints out there. Come out and support this event. Teams from all over the U.S., not mm -hmm. just the Big Ten, uh, will be converging on Lincoln, Nebraska. That sounds great. For more information, that's www.huskers.com. And now for something completely different. I'm one of those people who admires sword play in movies and plays, right. but I wouldn't dare try it myself. <laughs> Let's uh, talk about the Lincoln Fencing Club Icicle Invitational. Well... This is an amazing event. Uh, fencing is something, I mean, I even go back to the days of Happy Days. I think the Fonz had a little fencing action in the Happy Days episodes from years gone by. Was that before or after he jumped the shark? I think it was after. <laughs> I can't remember. But this is the Heartland Circuit event. Spectators are welcome. Uh, they will have uh, a lot of great foil-related events, mixed women's and men's on Saturday, and APE on Sunday, which is mixed women's and men's as well. Uh, a wonderful at the event at the Air Park Recreation Center and a good chance to get out and see something you don't see a lot of, mm -hmm. um, but it, it should be a lot of fun to go see. Take your kids out there. They might get interested in what really is a safe sport. It is a very safe sport, and uh, just be beware and on guard when you get home. They oh. may want to have a little fight when they get home. So. Good one, Jeff. All right, remind us again what the website is for the CVB. That's right. Lincoln.org is our website. You can give us a call at 434-5348. Stop and see, see us at 7th and P. More importantly, be a fan of ours on Facebook and learn about a lot of these events as we learn about them as well. All right. Thank you very much, Jeff. And we'll be back with Tom Lorenz from the Pershing Center right after this. Welcome back to Out and About. Pershing Center is starting off 2012 with a bang. Tom Lorenz is joining us and uh, to tell us about the first shows of the new year. It's a great new year and I want to wish everyone a happy new year. It was a terrific year last year. We finished it off really strong with that great New Year's Eve party and Dirk Bentley in, in December, but boy, January and February looked terrific, Diane. We don't like the word snowstorm, but we're going to talk about snowstorm anyway. It is. It's a new snowstorm. Remember last year we did the blizzard tour when we had Nellie. This year it's snowstorm. It's the same kind of thing. Great lineup. T-Pain, Gym Class Heroes. We just added a, a group called Out of Sight. They've got a great new song. You see it on the Pepsi commercials called Tonight is the Night. Uh, Greaves and Butto, they do kind of some remixes of some things. Chris Cab, a really good new little kind of an R&B singer. Just a lot of cool stuff on this tour. The idea was to take the hottest acts that are out right now, package them together, and bring them out. Last year, we were only a, one of 10 different tour sites. This wow. year, they're expanding to about 30 different cities, but Lincoln got a great pick. We got a great night. February uh, 11th? 11th is mm -hmm. our night. It's a Saturday night. We're looking forward to a lot of uh, uh, great, you know, uh, this one last year for 7,000, just about sold out. We expect that to happen again this year, so get those tickets early. And it is an all-ages show? It's an all-ages show. Uh, you know, as always, when parents, just be careful. There's always some adult language that ends up in some of this music, but otherwise, it's very good. It'll be a nice night. General admission, lots of room in Pershing, great sound system. Uh, we're looking forward to having a terrific night. All right, fun. And you've got another big get in March then with Rodney Carrington coming. Yeah, Rodney's been here a few times before, and, you know, he's that comedian cowboy. Again, <laughs> you know, Rodney's a very interesting guy. He had a very nice TV show, and that was one persona. Uh, he's a little bit... Uh, uh, more adult in his, uh, in his comedy, but uh, Rodney is just a blast. And you hear him on Bob and Tom a lot, mm -hmm. been around for years. We're glad to have Rodney back. That March 3rd date will be a lot of fun. It's right between state tournaments. So, I mean, if you're in town to uh, check out a, a basketball game, come on over to Pershing that Saturday night and check out Rodney. And he's multi-talented. He's a comedian, a singer-songwriter, right. an actor. Yep. And then I guess he also has a foundation because $2 of every ticket is going to his foundation. He is. He's, he, he's got a charitable part going this year. And when you talk about a musician, he's a very good musician. I mean, he, he comes out, writes his own songs, he's on the guitar. It's a lot of fun. 
All right, another new year for Cornhusker Fight Club and the No Coast Derby Girls, two of the staples at Pershing. We've got both of them coming back. Uh, the Cornhusker Fight Club, their fight is going to be on the 10th. Uh, again, you know, we've been having, it's MMA, it's mixed martial arts, great attendance lately. We've got terrific production. Uh, Dakota Crow does a terrific job of bringing in really good fighters. Uh, you know, last time we had almost, um, uh, I think, tw 15 or 16 different fights. It's a terrific night, you know, a lot of good talent. You've heard a lot lately about the Brock Lesnar fight and everything that was coming up. This one, well, obviously we won't have Brock, but we've got some terrific local fighters. And the Derby Girls start back in February. Keep, keep your eyes tuned for that. You know, you'll see some great announcements on that. Terrific to have them back. They keep getting better and better. And then this October, we're leading up to a great uh, regional tournament again with the No Coast Derby Girls and 10 other teams from around the country. All right, sounds great. We also want to remind people about the Blake Shelton Show, January 14th. Tickets still on sale? There's a few tickets still on sale. What we're starting to do now is there's some tickets that are close to the stage. We're calling them possible restricted view. It kind of depends on where they hang the sound. But they're terrific tickets. Up, you know, We've got over 6,000 tickets out for that show. Blake is just as hot as can be right now. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got some terrific people coming with him from The Voice that'll be there. Um, you know, Justin Moore will be there. Um, uh, and it's so, it, it's a, uh, we're very lucky to have one of the top country shows in the nation touring right now coming to Lincoln. And uh, Lincoln has responded terrifically. Right, title of Male Vocalist of the Year at the CMAs last, he was. just last year. You know, and, and this has been a, a big year. You know, he married Miranda Lambert. He's had a terrific run of things. The Voice has been, a you know, really good for his career. Um, so uh, this is his time and, and we're really glad to have him. All right, here comes the brides the next day, January 15th. You know, it's that time of year, you know, you kind of start snuggling in the uh, winter days and uh, you make those uh, choices to, to be attached for the rest of your life. And so come on down, bring, it, bring your groom down, you know, bring your mom, you know, your, uh, all your bridesmaids, check out all the different things, dresses, um, s music uh, companies, uh, catering, all the different things. You know, you got to plan that honeymoon early so That's you can right. get going. It's a, it's, a, it's a great day at Pershing. Uh, lots of booths. There's a, a fashion show that happens up off the stage. And again, you know, bring your groom. He'll have stuff to look at too because he needs to buy into this. So guys, you know, get out there. Maybe married people could go and plan their second honeymoon. Well, that's not bad either. You know, that's a, it, and KFOR does a beautiful job with this. And there are a lot of good deals. You know, there's a lot of different groups that, you know, it's not just for uh, people planning the wedding. You can do some other good things. All right. Let's not forget the eight ball shootout, the 20th and through 22nd. You know, VVS, uh, the guys at VVS here do tournaments uh, throughout all the different, you know, bars and lounges and those kind of things. And this brings together that uh, a lot of those guys from uh, Lincoln that come through and do a tournament. This leads up to our big tournament in April, but we'll have over 40 tables in the lower level. Um, it's, it's really quite good, and you get to watch some of these guys shoot. It's open to the public. Uh, they're very talented, and you know it's one of those cool things we get to do at Pershing that maybe doesn't get a lot of uh, advertisement, but it's a good event for us in the city. All right. Rodeo's coming up, and I just noted before we started taping, you've got your cowboy boots on I do. Today. I got my boots ready for rodeo. Um, you know, PRC Rodeo, uh, PRCA Rodeo, and, and the stock producer we work with out of North Dakota, provide stock to the national uh, rodeo finals out in Las Vegas. This is a terrific rodeo, and we've been kind of inching up the prize money to get better and better riders all along. Um, you know, to do rodeo in January in Pershing, you know, get about you know, 50, 60 truckloads of dirt in there, uh, get all the fences in, it's a great time, and you are right on top. I mean, when you're sitting here in that front row, that rider might end up in your lap, and, and there's not a bad seat in the place. Um, it, it's, you know, it's quality stuff. Um, you know, the, the Bulls and Bronx are just outstanding. Uh, it's a full rodeo, so, you know, tickets are selling very well. Again, we want people to get on their tickets soon because it is tracking ahead of the last couple years. All right, and then Sesame Street Live as well. Uh, four shows, Elmo makes music. Everybody loves Elmo. Everybody loves Elmo and their Muppets, you know, and, and what's what's hotter right now than Muppets? You know, the new Muppet movies out there. As we, you know, brought our kids up, they all got to watch Sesame Street on the way through. Um, and this year we've got kind of something a little different. There's kind of an interactive sort of a picture taking spot that when parents come early, bring your camera. Uh, there's some great scenes that you can, you know, from Sesame Street, you can get your kid right into those uh, those pictures. Uh, Sesame Street is so much fun. It's been a staple here in Lincoln for years and years. Diane, you know, what a nicer group of people, to, you know, what a great group of people to work with. And, uh, and so, you know, again, get those tickets early, come in, 
And uh, it's just another fun thing that we always do in uh, that January, February time frame. All right, Tom, we look for more big announcements from Pershing as we move through the year. And this there's also a lot of work going on about the future of, of that great building. You know, there's we continue to look at different options. I know another one came out in the paper recently, uh, talked about maybe um, kind of a, a floral area and, and those kind of, there's just lots of great options for it. We'll see what happens. You know, we hope to have uh, some good announcements about some Pinewood Bowl stuff. Uh, you know, we're starting to work on the, the new arena bookings, so there's just so many great things happening in Lincoln. We're so happy to be part of it, and uh, Lincoln should be really proud. This is a terrific community that's moving forward. All right, it's going to be a great year. Thank you very much, Tom. We want to let people know PershingCenter.com is the place to check out all the Pershing Center events. 441-8744 if you want to talk to the folks at Pershing. And Ticketmaster, as always, 800-745-3000. Again, thank you, Tom. Um, I want to thank all our guests for today, and thank you for watching. We hope to see you out and about.